In this video, we're looking at primary motor areas of the brain. So first to get our bearings, as we come towards the left side of the brain, we're coming towards the front side of the head. And as we go towards the right side of the brain, we're going towards the back of the head. And one major area I'd like to direct your attention to is this major midline coming down here. That midline is called the central sulcus, and it's a major anatomical landmark for us in the brain as it separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. And if we come just anterior to that central sulcus, you'll see this orange strip here bound by that central sulcus, and this line here, the precentral sulcus. That strip represents the primary motor cortex for us. And what's important about this area is this is where almost all of our voluntary movement commands are going to be executed and sent out from the brain to the body to generate a movement. So when we plan and coordinate more complex movements, if the referenced orange primary motor cortex is here, just anterior to that or on the front side of the brain, we'll have this premotor area in conjunction with, towards the midline, a supplementary motor area. Both the premotor area and the supplementary motor area allow us to move with uh, increased complexity. They will team together with the primary motor cortex to eventually send more complex instructions down the spinal cord, which will exit and innervate skeletal muscle. In this video, we're looking at primary sensory areas of the brain. So back here to this major midline, that central sulcus, in this video, we're coming just posterior to that, and you will see this dark shaded purple strip here bound by that central sulcus and this sulcus here, the post central sulcus. This strip represents our primary somatosensory cortex. And what's important about this area is it's where almost all of our sensory information from the body will come to. So when we have sensations of touch, pressure, vibration, pain, temperature, all of those sensations will come from the body and end up at the final place here in the sensory cortex where they will actually be felt by the body. All right, so here we are going to examine the major lobes of the cerebral cortex. On the front side of the brain, we'll see in this yellow and kind of beige type color, this is the frontal lobe. This is going to be involved in things like executive function, cognitions, uh, our ability to think, our personality. On the left hemisphere of the frontal lobe, we'll start to involve language. And so if we go from this frontal lobe on this anterior part of the brain, we go now to the rear, this posterior side. If you want to reference this division between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe, in this purple here, we have the uh, parietal cortex. The parietal cortex is going to be involved in uh, the sensory processing. So all major uh, sensory information being relayed to the cortex. This is the site where conscious processing of uh, sensory information coming to the brain is going to occur. Below the parietal lobe here is the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe is going to be involved in two uh, major processes. One is going to be hearing. Two is going to be uh, the processing of vision. And so if we move from the temporal lobe to the rear of the brain, this yellow portion here is going to be considered the occipital lobe. In this yellow portion here, this occipital lobe will be involved in the early processing of both visual streams. So vision is the primary uh, processing that is going to occur here in the occipital lobe. So below the occipital lobe here, we'll have a structure called the cerebellum. The cerebellum here is going to be involved in movement. It's considered one of the motor modulators. Along with the basal ganglia, the cerebellum uh, can affect output of the primary motor cortex. 
simply stated, the cerebellum is going to be involved in motor learning, uh, it's going to be involved in balance, and it's going to be involved in correcting errors in real time. Say if cancer affected this part of our brain, movement would be very robotic, referred to as ataxia. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the major areas here in the frontal lobe. So we're looking at everything in front of this orange strip. So the first I'd like to direct your attention to is just here at the midline, this top portion of the front of the brain is called the superior frontal gyrus. This area here is primarily involved in working memory and it's bound by the midline of the brain and the superior frontal sulcus and then that area separates this middle area of the brain, the middle frontal gyrus, bound by that superior frontal sulcus and the inferior frontal sulcus. This gyrus of the frontal lobe is primarily involved in the formation of literacy within the brain, and then underneath that is the inferior frontal gyrus, primarily involved in speech formation and recognition. So here, the frontal lobe is in the yellow. As we tilt this brain upwards, we'll see here in purple, the parietal lobe. Now within this parietal lobe, the area closest to the frontal lobe or the motor cortex, outlined here in orange, is going to be the primary somatosensory cortex. As we move towards the back of the brain, we have two specific lobules. On the superior parietal lobule, we'll go ahead and outline that here. The inferior parietal lobule will of course then be inferior to the superior. You're going to have a lobule in the right hemisphere and also a lobule in the left hemisphere. So the superior uh, parietal lobule, inferior parietal lobule of the left hemisphere. Now as we rotate the brain back down, it's important for us to realize that as we separate these two hemispheres, this being the right hemisphere, this being the left. On this inside edge of the parietal lobe, we'll have a structure that's known as the precuneus. In this video, we're looking at major areas of the temporal lobe. So for this one, we're looking here where the purple shaded area separates from the red shaded area. And I want to direct your attention to this major line going across. That sulcus is a major anatomical landmark for us in the brain known as the sylvian fissure that separates this temporal lobe from the parietal lobe. And if we come just inferior or just below that sylvian fissure, we'll come to the superior temporal gyrus bound by that sylvian fissure and the superior temporal sulcus. The superior temporal gyrus is primarily involved in auditory processing or processing hearing information. If we come just inferior to that, we will get to the middle temporal gyrus bound by that superior sulcus and the inferior temporal sulcus. This middle portion of the temporal lobe is primarily involved in associating our visual information and our auditory information as well as memory processing. And then the bottom portion here of the temporal lobe the inferior temporal gyrus is primarily involved in visual processing. In this video, we're gonna be looking at some major areas of the occipital lobe. So we're looking here at this yellow and green shaded area at the back of the brain. And first, I wanna direct your attention here to where the yellow shaded area ends. This separation, this sulcus, is called the occipitoparietal sulcus and it separates the occipital lobe from the parietal lobe. And this region is separated into three distinct areas, the superior, middle, and inferior occipital gyri. And collectively, we know this area as the occipital face area because it's involved in facial recognition and facial processing. And then as we come just here to the inside portion, as this starts to dip down, we see an area called the cuneus developed to visual processing. So when we look at the division between the parietal lobe here in purple and the temporal lobe down below it, we are going to identify this structure here, this lateral cerebral fissure. 
This fissure divides the parietal from the temporal lobes. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the deeper structures within the brain. So first, to get an orientation, you are currently looking at the outer surface of the right hemisphere. And with this video, we're going to dig into some deeper structures within the brain. So first, I'd like to direct your attention to this blue structure here in the middle. That structure is known as the corpus callosum, and it connects the two hemispheres of the brain together. And all of this orange area around and within is known as the limbic system. So collectively, we have to realize that the emotional regulation is occurring within this limbic system. And when we couple emotional regulation with the formation of memory, we first have to draw our attention here to the hippocampus. The hippocampus, the gyrus involved, is going to first consolidate memory. It's considered the CD burner. In conjunction, the hypothalamus, or in conjunction, the hippocampus, as well as the mammillary body in this area here, allows for the consolidation of memory. And so what's interesting is that if this structure is affected, in other words, there's a pathology that affects uh, the structure and function of the mammillary body, amnesia could result. So pathologies related to dementia and Alzheimer's involve this body. So collectively, if we look at the limbic system, it's an integration of emotion and memory. We have the cingulate gyrus, along with the mammillary body and the hippocampus making up the limbic system. So here we will examine the brainstem, the cerebellum, we have the thalamus here and then the basal ganglia. So collectively, this is going to be more so the top part of the brainstem. This is going to be moving inferiorly or towards the bottom part of the brainstem. So the cerebellum involved in motor learning as well as coordination and balance is positioned posterior to that of the brainstem. The thalamus here is the gateway to the cortex. So we'll see connections between areas of the cerebral lobes relayed through this uh, structure here in orange, the thalamus. And then collectively, as we move towards the right side, this area here, the basal ganglia, is involved in providing uh, motor memories or the immediate instructions uh, that are later modified according to real-time sensory input. And if we dig in here a little bit more into the cerebellum relative to the brainstem, this cavity that you see here that separates the cerebellum from the brainstem is known as the fourth ventricle. And here you're looking at a cross section, so you're looking at the inner portions of the cerebellum. You'll see this tree-like structure here of white matter. That's called the arbor vitae, Latin for tree of life. And it's where all of the sensory information and motor information is passed in and out of the cerebellum. Next here you'll see this kind of protruding portion in the middle of the cerebellum. That is called the vermis, and it's one of the oldest portions of the cerebellum. And on the surface of the cerebellum, just like we see with the cerebral cortex, you'll see ridges, whereas in the cerebral cortex, these ridges were referred to as gyri. Within the cerebellum, the ridges are referred to as folia.